call the member for Braddon. Thank you very much, Deputy Speaker. And I welcome the opportunity to speak on this legislation. It's a topic that I have spoken on a number of times in this place. And as an island nation, our coastal shipping fleet is a vital part of our nation's infrastructure. For an island state like Tasmania, my home state, it's even more critical. Over 99 per cent of Tasmania's freight volumes are moved by sea. The timely and efficient movement of passengers and goods between Tasmania and the mainland not only means hundreds of local jobs, but this also supports key Tasmanian industries in the tourism, agriculture, forestry, aquaculture, mining and manufacturing sectors. Over 12.5 million tonnes of freight is moved through Tasmania's publicly owned ports, and forecasts indicate these volumes will increase. An additional $2.4 million of freight has moved through Port Latter, which is in my electorate. 80 per cent of Tasmania's sea freight is for interstate trade, with only 17 per cent international exports and a small amount is direct overseas freight. The ports of uh, Burnie and Devonport are Tasmania's two major freight ports and are based in my electorate. These ports are well serviced by three Australian-owned and crewed shipping companies, Toll that operates out of Burnie, Sea Road and TT Line that operate out of my hometown of Devonport. All three companies are investing in the Bass Strait route. Toll Shipping has announced that its two new Bass Strait freighters are expected to start operating on March 1 next year. The vessels will operate between Burnie uh, and Melbourne and are purpose-built and are at a cost of $170 million. The project also includes $141 million to upgrade terminals, wharves and berthing facilities at both ports. Sea Road Shipping has launched its $110 million Sea Road Mersey II vessel in 2016. That lifted the operations capacity by 62 per cent. TT Line are also in the process of replacing its two Spirit of Tasmania ships with larger vessels to cater for increased passengers, passenger vehicles and freight. At the moment, all three companies have the confidence to invest. Tasmania's maritime industry is part of our way of life. It is part of who we are and of our heritage. Like hundreds, if not thousands, of Tasmanians, my family has a connection with the sea. My father was a seafarer on the Princess of Tasmania, the Empress of Australia and the Able Tasman that sailed the Bass Strait between Sydney and Devonport and then Melbourne and Devonport. And while this side of the House welcomes this legislation and will be supporting it, one has to question how long will there be a viable Australian shipping industry that will actually need ships to be registered? Because the actions of the coalition indicate what they want to do is destroy Australia's shipping industry. It seems their ideological bent against the Maritime Union of Australia has warped their logic. In their efforts to wipe out the MUA, it appears that they are prepared to wipe out Australian shipping industry's collateral damage. When Labor was last in office, we took a number of steps to rebuild Australia's shipping industry. We had a simple goal. More Australian seafarers crewing more Australian flagged ships, carrying more Australian goods around the Australian coastline. Labor made a number of reforms that the Shadow Minister and the member for Grainler at the time has articulated to the House. This included a zero tax rate for Australian shippers and other regulatory changes to make things easier, including the establishment of a single national regulator. Labor reforms were about balancing the playing field. They were developed in consultation with the industry. We also established an international shipping register, allowing operators of Australian flag vessels to employ mixed Australian and foreign crews on internationally agreed rates and condition. Importantly, Labor's changes did not preclude the use of foreign vessels. They simply required firms needing to move freight between Australian ports to first seek out an Australian operator. When none were available, foreign vessels could be used so long as they paid Australian-level wages on domestic sectors. Now, that all makes perfect sense and seems very fair. We also enacted the first major rewrite of the nation's maritime laws in almost a century, making sure oil companies pay for any and all damages their ships may cause and develop Australia's first national port strategy. However, for Labor's suite of reforms to work, they needed time. In 2013, on, upon the coalition's election, those sitting opposite set about destroying the industry with their first piece of legislation designed to open up our waters to foreign flagged ships with foreign crews. Notwithstanding the risks to national security, fuel security or the environment, the coalition was determined to wipe out the Australian shipping industry. They said that was not the case, but you only had to look at their regulatory impact statement that accompanied that legislation. That document confirmed that nearly all the savings expected to be produced by that legislation, 88 per cent, 
was to come from shipping operators sacking their Australian crews and replacing them with cheaper foreign crews. Tasmanian owned shipper Sea Road said at the time it could be forced, possibly, to replace local crews with foreign workers. Now, people in my electorate worked working for Sea Road. There's literally hundreds of them. Sea Road was also concerned that this bill could ultimately lead to reduced services and increased prices. The government's own modelling from that bill anticipated that four of the six ships servicing Bass Strait would be foreign flagged if that bill was passed. That would have been a disaster for Tasmania. Fortunately, though, the Senate was right to block that legislation, and we had hoped by then the government would have come to their senses. But no, they are back at it again. A bill has passed shamedly in this chamber, putting Australian crewed vessels at a competitive disadvantage. And if it passes the Senate, it will allow for temporary licensed foreign flag vessels to significantly vary their freight volumes and days they are carrying domestic freight, while at the same time making it almost impossible for an Australian general licensed ship to contest those movements. This means Australian ship shippers simply won't know what is being carried until after the event. In effect, this means any half-smart foreign operator and compliant local freight company can game the, game the system to use foreign flag ships. The end result would be that these proposed changes would make it easier for foreign ships with exploited crews to operate on the Australian coast. Now, I've been accused of standing in this place talking about Australia's maritime industry of only supporting the Maritime Union of Australia. But there are literally hundreds, if not thousands, of jobs, not just in Tasmania but across this country, that would be lost because of this government's ideological attack on our maritime industry. And I will stand here every day to support those workers in my electorate, the 400-plus workers associated with the maritime industry, because I will be here protecting their jobs. Bizarrely, though, this government did not even consult with Australia's peak shipping industry body, the Maritime Industry Australia Limited, or MIAL, on this bill. MIAL membership includes Toll, Sea Road, ANL, Northwest Shelf Shipping Services Company, BP Shipping, just to name a few. No other maritime, Australian maritime business except Carnival Australia, who are cruise operators, were invited to participate in the consultation sessions for the changes to the Coastal Trading Act. How can you possibly consult on shipping changes without actually speaking to the shipping companies? Because if he had consulted with MIAL, the minister, he would have heard this, and I quote from MIAL's media release from September last year. And I quote, there is nothing in the bill to assist Australian ship owners to compete with foreign ships that have all but unfettered access to coastal trades. We have held low expectations on that front and unfortunately haven't been disappointed there. This is a damning indictment from Australia's peak shipping industry body on this bill. I have made a number of calls to this government in this place to give a 100 per cent guarantee that under their proposed legis legislative changes, the Tasmanian's domestic sea freight task will continue to be serviced by Australian flagged and crewed ships across the Bass Strait. It is very concerning that to date not a single member of the coalition is prepared to give that guarantee not even the Tasmanian Liberal senators, and that's why there is not a Liberal member of the House of Representatives sitting opposite. But I once again make that call. If you can give a guarantee for Tasmania's fair share of the GST to remain, you should be able to give a guarantee our shipping lifeline is secured. Each sitting week I look with interest at the legislative agenda for the Senate, and each week the Coastal Trading Amendments Bill does not appear. I guess that tells us the government does not have the numbers to get the legislation through. And why would they, when the legislation contains provisions that make it easier for foreign flag crew ships to replace Australian crewed ships and those very workers that are from my electorate? I will also be watching in the Senate how Tasmanian National Senator Martin votes. Senator Martin is from my hometown and was previously the mayor of the city of Devonport a city that has a very long seafaring tradition, with many of those workers in the city of Devonport attached to the maritime sector. Senator Martin is on the public record opposing changes to our coastal shipping laws. I would like to remind the senator and his new National Party colleagues what he has previously said on this issue as reported in the Advocate newspaper when Senator Martin stood at the last general election 
when he still at that time was formerly the mayor of the city of Devonport. And this is from the newspaper article. Alderman Martin said an Australian presence in coastal shipping was needed. And I quote from him directly, I don't believe in getting in cheap labour and losing Australian jobs over that, he said. Let's hope Senator Martin keeps his word to his community. That didn't elect him. He was put in there through the uh, demise of Senator Lambie. But if he wishes to be re-elected, he should stand up for those maritime jobs that are in the hundreds, right. if not thousands, in Tasmania. Senator Martin should also take note of uh, correspondence that I've received from local people in our community on this issue when debating coastal shipping legislation in August of this year. One such piece was from Cal uh, Callum, who is a local master mariner and one that Senator Martin would like to continue to so-called represent. And Callum says, I just watched the video of you, that, that's me, speaking against the Coastal Trading Amendments Bill in the House of Representatives and wanted to thank you for your passion and efforts in looking to secure the bass rate for future generations. I am a third generation master mariner. My late grandfather came to Australia from Scotland as an extra master mariner and became the first principal of the Australian Maritime College. He was a key figure in establishing an amazing tra training facility that is world renowned and the subsequent high standard of Australian seafarers, particularly master mariners and deck officers. He was then approached to become the principal of the World Maritime University in Malmo, Sweden. He was awarded an Order of Australia for his achievements. My point is we are on the brink of losing all of his hard work and the hard work of many others. It would be absolutely devastating to lose the Bass Strait. The impact it would have on my family and many others in Tasmania, Victoria nationally would be monumental. And recently I received another piece from Monica who, in response to an editorial in the local paper that was written to support maritime jobs, she wrote to me, Dear Justine, I quote, finally recognition of the impact on Tassie of the selling off of Australian coastal shipping and the jobs that go with it. I am a cadet engineer. I'm also studying at the Australian Maritime College in Launceston. When I finish my course, I would like to have an ongoing job in the shipping industry in Tasmania. It seems there would be little chance of that if the government's proposal to amend the existing coastal trading legislation goes ahead. I have read the draft ALP policy platform proposing a strong Australian flag shipping industry with a secure Australian workforce, which is fantastic. In the next election, will you, as the Labor candidate for Braddon, be campaigning for locally crewed and owned shipping for Burnie and Devonport? Best wishes, Monica. Well, I can assure both Monica and Callum that Labor will continue to campaign for locally crewed and locally owned shipping operations out of Burnie and Devonport. Their correspondence symbolises what I spoke about earlier and many times in this place, the connection between the people of Tasmania and the sea. It's a connection that goes beyond transporting passengers and freight. I shudder to think what would happen if Tasmania was left to the mercy of foreign flag ships and crews, particularly in difficult economic times, when volumes may not be as profitable as they are now. Do they just all leave? and leave Australians' uh, freight task to someone else to pick up. Maybe the state or federal government need to then go into their pockets. As I said at the beginning of my contribution, Labor will be supporting this bill. But the bottom line is there is a very real difference between the two sides of politics when it comes to shipping. Labor strongly believes Australia needs a viable, competitive and growing domestic maritime industry. The coalition doesn't. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker.